Hello, lovely people. Let's talk about the passive system that I have here. So if you watched my video last week, I did a tune with all the passives in my Alpine Status front end. We're running from one small DSP and a four channel amplifier. If you haven't seen that, go back and watch that because it's kind of a cool video. Uh, and I said that I'm going to listen to the system for a week or so and I'm going to give my impressions on how it sounds like because now I can make a comparison between like running fully active and having a passive system. So uh, let's start with how it sounded before, because like before the I put the amplifier, before I put the passive crossovers, I was running only the mids and tweets, and before that I was running only the mid range and mid bass. So when I put in the very beginning, when I just put them, I put the mid ranges in the dash, and I tuned the mid ranges to be flat from like. 150 all the way up to wherever they went like 17 18k and at that time i said that they the mid ranges the three inch alpine status mid ranges i, I said that they not necessarily need a tweeter because they play very very high and indeed they do play very high however when i put the tweeters in i did notice a big big difference in the top end as obviously you would expect because tweet is supposed to be doing the top end not the mid ranges and the main thing that i noticed even if i tuned the response for the mid ranges flat all the way up when you crank up the volume there was some distortion not distortion but like harshness at the top end especially like in the female vocals and my theory now it was because of the cone breakup of the mid ranges they do break up very high, but those breakups, even if they measure linearly and like flat, they don't sound as nice. And when I put those tweeters in and they cross them at about like three, three and a half K, all that harshness went away and it sounded like butter smooth. Now, when I have all the passives and I tuned it and you saw that I have a big hole in the response uh, above like what 200 hertz or something like that and I speculated that it's because of difference in time alignment there's no time alignment between the mid bass and the mid range so I have a hole there and uh, the rest looks kind of okay and the main thing how does it sound so Again, I'm not a professional. My reference level is not that high and everything. It doesn't sound as good as a fully active system, obviously. And the main reason is, for me personally, is the integration between the subwoofer and the mid bass. Because with passive system, I don't have the option to time align and phase align the mid bass to the subwoofer. It does measure, it does have a response, very nice, like rising top, bottom end and everything. So it does cover the range. However, they're not in time and I don't have that upfront base. It just, it doesn't exist. There is base. It sounds a bit boxy and boomy. Even if it doesn't have that much of the bottom end, it does sound it that way because, and again, this is my theory, because when you have subwoofer and mid bass not in time and not aligned, you have the crossover region where they overlap at about like 80, 70 hertz. The notes specifically in that region, uh, they get prolonged because you have like uh, the first, the whichever the first plays the note, the second driver kind of repeats the same note and it gets dragged out. Even if it's like for one or two milliseconds, you can still hear it. And it's very easy to locate the subwoofer that it is in the central console. Now, the other reason might be because of the crossover region is the crossover point between the subwoofer and the mid bass is quite high. I think acoustically now it's about 100 hertz and that might contribute to the be able to locate the subwoofer as well high crossover region how high crossover point but the main thing i think is the time difference 
between the subwoofer and the mid-bass. And with passives, you cannot really do anything about it unless you have a head unit that is capable of delaying the front end compared to the subwoofer or vice versa, depending on where the subwoofer is. And you cannot get around it. There's no way. Like even with locations, like you cannot relocate stuff uh, when you have a fully installed system. So this is, I think the main drawback of the passive system is the subwoofer integration, at least in my case, because I don't have an option to time align them. The mid, mid range and tweeter, uh, they're kind of okay, it's not that bad. Mid bass and mid range is bad because you have the massive hole. Again, you cannot do anything about it. But the main thing, the most noticeable thing is the subwoofer integration. And it sounds, I don't wanna say bad, but you can locate the sub it sounds a bit boomy and it doesn't sound as good as it should. Like the very bottom end, what I'm most surprised is this Dayton sub. So I have a Dayton reference 10 inch subwoofer here as a front sub. When I had the IB sub in the back, it used to play down to 45 only, but now I let it play all the way down. So it, it is in a small sealed enclosure, like half a cubic foot or something, and it plays all the way down and I'm so surprised. So it plays down, like down to 20 hertz, easy, even below that. And with that comes issues as well. So with more excursion at the bottom end, the center console moves quite a lot. When you cross it at like 45 hertz, uh, when I rest my hand on that, you don't feel it as much, but when it's crossed very low, you have quite a high moving mass. I think it's like 150 grams and it moves quite a lot. And the whole central console, it moves as well and shakes. So this is like the, ta the tactile feedback that you get from the subwoofer. It does play nice all the way down. However, you can feel it and I don't like it. And it's exactly the same with the doors. When I put the DP mid, mid base in the doors, I rest my uh, foot next to the door card and you can feel that vibration and I don't like it. When I have a mid base in the kicks, I don't feel anything and that's the whole thing. It doesn't distract you. It, it doesn't let you locate the actual drivers. So the next step is, um, what I'm gonna do next, I'm, I'm potentially make a video of time alignment, the passive system. So I'm gonna have exactly the same system. The only thing is gonna add time alignment to it. So try to time align the subwoofer, phase align the subwoofer with the mid base as much as I can and left to right as well as much as I can. So yeah, uh, this was my impressions, but in general, the front end mid base, mid range and tweet they sound so smooth and i did notice that only with the mid ranges so the mid range re region it's it's amazing and i'm uh, now i'm thinking why because if i compare it the satori's that i have five inch satori's that are firing up the glass with these three and a half mid ranges for me personally these sound better and again it can be contributed to psychoacoustics. It can be contributed to my, uh, like, because it's not ABX comparison. I didn't switch them like that. I did change the tilting. Uh, the driver size as well influences the sound because uh, smaller drivers play higher omnidirectionally, whereas my five inch Satori's, like two, two and a half K, they were beaming up the glass at the same frequency, these three and a half inch, they still play omnidirectionally and they're aimed more towards me. So that could be contribution as well. But I love the front end. It sounds so smooth. Like there's no harshness at all. The only harshness that you have is when you crank it up. And that is not because of distortion but because of the volume, because it's way like, if you listen like 110 dB or so, it's like, it hurts your ears from the volume itself and not from distortion, because I don't hear any distortion with these at all.
I did hear some distortion when I was running them from the inbuilt amplifier from the DSP, the one that has like 25 watts only. So on the, like when you crank it up full tilt, you can hear the amplifier distortion, not the speakers. And now when I have them on a proper amplifier, there's no distortion. I love how they sound. I love the sound. Yeah, so next is going to be next step up with the time alignment tune. And then eventually after like, I don't know when, we're going to run fully active. So this was like my quick 10 minutes uh, impressions of the passive system of the status. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next one.